Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'm going to teach you a tool that is extremely useful if you write code. This code can be LaTeX. It allows us to track all the changes that we make in a file in a very simple and easy way. It is much better uh, than just simply using Google Drive or any other cloud storage system. I think you must use a cloud storage system just to uh, save your file and then make sure that if your computer breaks, then you have a copy of your files. But uh, on the other end, this doesn't mean that uh, you shouldn't use Git. It allows us to much easily track the changes. We can write commit messages and then see all the things that we have changed. Now I'm going to take you to a simple example. We're going to create a LaTeX project on our computer. We're going to see how to start a Git repository on our local computer. We're going to see what it means to create a commit, how to add file to the Git repository. We're also going to see how to revert and go back in time, so to just revert some changes. Then we are going to push the changes to GitHub. Here is a very important concept to understand. Git and GitHub are two different things. Git is a software which is free and open source that allows you to track all the changes of your file. GitHub is an online tool that you can use to actually store our file, a copy of our file online. And then it's much easier to share these files with other people. I'm also going to show you how to merge changes or conflicting changes that another of your colleague or you may make. For this tutorial, I'm going to use PyCharm. I've already made a video on how to get started with PyCharm. So just check that video out if you want to find out more. But I'm planning to release another video about PyCharm now to get started because fundamentally PyCharm is the tool that I use on a daily to day basis to write Python code and to write my Linux code. I think it has great functionality when it comes to version control and then I will show you how, to, how you can leverage it in combination with Git. So the first thing that you need to do is to install Git. If you don't have Git installed on your computer, just type Git in Google and then you're going to be redirected to their uh, main page. You can just go here in Downloads and then you can download for Windows. The next thing that we need to do is to start a new project on inside PyCharm. We can open PyCharm here, we can click on New Project. Uh, in my PyCharm, I've already Textify installed on my computer. As I previously mentioned, I have a video on how to get started with Textify inside PyCharm. And I would highly encourage you to have a look at that. And please check if in the future I release a new video. So here we can click on LaTeX project. And then we can decide where to add our project. So this is going to be location C user Federico desktop LaTeX. And then we're going to call it Git. And then we can click on create. This is as simple or the same as if you would have navigated to the desktop and then just created a new folder called Git. And then inside this new folder, we would have added like a file called main.txt. So here we have our file that PyCharm has created for us. I really like to create my LaTeX project with, Git, uh, with PyCharm, sorry, because it automatically adds the auxil file and the out file, where it's going to store all the auxiliary files and the output files. This is going to keep our project nice and organized and we will not have all those files that are created in LaTeX in the way. So the first thing that we need to do is try to compile this document. So we just need to add some text here inside the document. I'm assuming that you're all familiar with LaTeX. If you are not, please check my video on how to get started in LaTeX in 10 minutes. But basically here we have our preamble in which we define the document class and we define the package that we want to use. Here we have begin document and then inside here we are just defining some text. So if we want to compile this document, we just need to add a reference. And if we check inside here, main.bib file, this file is actually empty. So in order to do that, I'm just bringing up Mendeley. I'm just going to go into my publications. So I'm just copying one of the paper that I wrote as a bib text. Entry. So I have also a video on this topic on how to export citations from Mendeley inside LaTeX. But it's pretty self-explanatory. We just have to do that. And then inside this file here, Control V, now we have our article. Let's go back to main.txt. And inside here, after the text, 
we put a non-breaking space and then we specify site and then here we specify the order. The great thing is that I can press here on this error, on this arrow, and alternatively I can press Ctrl Shift F10 and then FileCharm is going to compile the document for us. It's going to automatically put all the auxiliary file in the auxiliary folder here. It's going to put the output file here in the output folder. And it has created this document for me, which is now open here on my screen. I've set up that I want to open the documents with Sumatra PDF. You can choose not to do so. And you can also have the documents open inside PyCharm. So why it is great? I will show you in a second. Because now that I'm making changes to my document, it's very difficult if I wanted to track this change. So let's go back to here and then let's look for some placeholder text. And then we can copy this text and we can go back to PyCharm and then we can copy our text. It is going to consider all these as a single line. So in order to leverage Git and to make sure that it's tracking line by line, we need to have that each sentence starts after a period in a new line. PyCharm is really helping us on that because as you can see here, it's highlighting and it's telling us that there is an error. To fix this, we can press Alt Enter and then PyCharm is telling us to insert a line feed. This is just basically as pressing Enter after the period. We can speed up this process and press Alt J to just select period and the space. We press Alt J, so we have two cursor here. We can press right and then we can press Enter. Now we have each new line starting on a new row. Now what do we need to do next? Well, we could use the tool here or the version control, and then we can create a Git repository inside PyCharm. But uh, I want to keep this uh, tutorial as general as possible, because as you can see so far, we didn't need to use actually PyCharm. So at the beginning, I'm going to keep it generic, and I'm going to show you how to get started with Git inside here, the command line. PyCharm knows already that we are inside in the right folder. We are inside users, the Rico desktop, LaTeX, and Git. The first thing that we need to do is to do git init. This is going to initiate a git repository. I can navigate to the desktop. I'm inside the folder called Datec. Let me bring it up. If I go here inside here, you can see that there is a hidden folder called git. Another very thing and very important thing that is actually crucial about git, and that's why it's also so powerful when also using combination with PyCharm or any other ID is that we can see that the color of all the files has changed. Why? Because PyCharm is actually telling us that we have initiated a Git repository on our computer, but these files are in red because these files are not found. So if we keep go ahead without tracking this file, we are not going to be able to use virtual control because we are not tracking this file. So this is a simple fix. However, before doing that, we need to create a Git ignore file. The git ignore file allows us to ignore some file. We don't want to track all these auxiliary files because LaTeX is creating the file for us. So we don't care what is there. Those files are needed by LaTeX to compile our document, but we just want to keep track of the bibliography file and the main.txt file. So let's actually do a quick Google search here and we can search for git ignore file LaTeX. So the first result should be fine. We can get this one here. We can go in a row and then we can copy this file. Ctrl copy. We can go in PyCharm here and then we click here at the top, right click, new, file. And this file, the file name must be dot git ignore. Then we, it, PyCharm is quite intelligent because it's asking us if you want to track the following file to git. Inside here, we are going to copy all the content of that raw file that we got from GitHub. And then on top of this, we also want to exclude the .idea file. This is a file that is useful inside PyCharm to, to have version control and to keep track of all the changes. But again, we don't want to track this file. We can do two things. One is to do git add src and then main.txt. I can press enter 
and this has added main.tx to the file that are actually tracked. As you can see, the color of main.txt has changed. An alternative option, if you have a lot of files, is to write hit add period. If I press enter, this will add all the files, and this works across all IDs. An alternative way in PyCharm is just to click on the file, right click, and then go into git here, and then we can add this file. As you can see, it's Ctrl Alt A. But I want to show you the generic way, which is to use git add period. So here we have git add period, and we will see that it will not add all these yellow files, which are excluded, because we have specified in the git ignore file that we don't want to include this file. But it's going to have, uh, it will have added the main.pip file and the main.pdf file, which is the output file that we are generating as we compile the doc. Last thing that we need to do is to git commit and then type so type git commit dash m and then inside um, your quotation mark we write or double quotation mark we write the commit message. In this case, we are going to say first draft of the paper. We can press enter and this has added the this for file to inside git. How can we check that? But in PyCharm, we can go here at the bottom, which says git. Then we can go in log here, and we can see the first draft of the paper, which is the first commit. Let's see now what is the benefit of start using git. Well, I can go inside the main text, and I can, don't worry about this green line, it's just because we're using Latin. So here we're going to create, get another um, just paragraph, just because we want it to be different. And then we're going to add this new paragraph here, copy, inside our document. So again, we can press Ctrl V, we add all these paragraphs. And as I did before, just make sure that you are making sure that you have all the new line into a new line. We press Alt J, we select all these problems here, and then we press Enter. So we are going to be in a new line. If you want, we can press Ctrl Alt L. And this is going to format all the document for us. Let's compile the document. We can just click here, run main or shift F10. And then this is going to compile the document for us. Let's see what has happened. So here we can see that some file turned blue. Why this file has turned blue? So we saw that red file are files that are not tracked. Green file are files that we just recently added. Then we have blue file, which are new. So if you open a blue file here, we can see that we have some text which is in green. Why is in green? Because all this text with this band here in green, we can see that was recently added. On top of that, I can press here on the green band here, and we can see that this was just text that wasn't there. If I press on this arrow here, I could roll back these lines and just delete them all. Let me show you another thing. Here, I want to remove this word here and I want to change it. See, now this line is not red, and it's not green, but it's blue. Why is blue? Because this line existed before, but we have actually changed the content of this line. So, change. Instead of doing a commit from the command line, we're going to press Ctrl K, and we're going to see the committed interface. The main important thing is the, this main.txt file. And see how beautiful is this interface. So here we can see at a glance all the lines that we that were already there and we changed, and these are in blue. And then all the text that we have added, which is in green. If we want, we can selectively say, no, we don't want to commit this change. So we don't want to keep track of this change with this commit. So we can press on this tick box here. Or we could revert to the previous changes by just pressing this arrow here or using the Ctrl Alt Alt command. For the moment, we are happy, and we're going to write a commit message. And we're going to say, added the text to the document. Let's commit this change by just pressing here on commit, or you can press Ctrl Enter. This is going to commit the files. As you can see now, all the files turn white because we haven't made any changes because all the changes that we have made are now tracked with Git. So here we can see that we have the second commit here, 
which tell us all the files that have changed. We go back here to the main.txt file. We make sure that we are there. We can collapse this one. And we're going to change completely this sentence here. And we're going to change this word. Let's see. And we're going to commit this change here. Let's see inside main. I, to open this window again, I press Ctrl K. And we can see that I've deleted this sentence and I have um, changed this word here. So let's remember that is change and then the second center, sentence starts with UT. But now we are deleting this sentence. So the second change, we don't want to track it and we actually want to go back. So I want to quickly show you how to do that. So if you press revert, then that change disappears. You can just press ESC, we can press commit, and then you can commit that change. But let's now think that we have changed our mind. We really like that sentence which started with UT. How to go back? Well, we can go inside git here. We can go here inside the latest commit. We can track that we cancel actually that sentence over there. So we can either copy this sentence here, or we could also revert to this uh, previous change that we did. So how to do that? So here we knew that that sentence that we liked was there. So we can go here in git at the bottom, click here on this commit that we wanted, and we can see reset current branch to here. Okay. So we can do an hard reset. So file will be reverted to the state of the selected commit. Any local change, of course, will be changed. But wherever we want that sentence to come back, so we can press press on reset. As you can see, that sentence now is back, and all the files are white because we have reverted that, those changes. Let's make a final change, and then I'm going to show you how to use uh, GitHub and how to sync this with GitHub. One thing before uh, we do that, uh, I just would like to ask you uh, to like this video, if you like the content in this video, and if you can, please subscribe to this channel. It really means a lot to me, and it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. It will also help people like you to find content like this video. The more like I get, the more is the, the more is likely that YouTube is going to show this video to other people. And if you benefited from it, they might also benefit from this video. If you can, also only if you can. Of course, this video, the content of this video is for free. But if you can, please also consider buying me a coffee. You can learn how to do so by checking down in the video description. There is a link on how to buy a coffee or to how to buy me a coffee. Alternatively, you can support my channel on Patreon. Let's go back to the content of the video. So we're going to generate one last paragraph. We're going to generate, we're going to add this paragraph, and then we're going to sync this repository with GitHub. Let's go back to PyCharm. We're going to add yeah, a new paragraph. So this is our paragraph. As I previously mentioned, and now you are familiar with it, we need to make sure that every new line, uh, every sentence starts in a new line. This is a good practice. Because uh, actually, let's don't do that. And I want to show you why we should do it. Okay? So here, let's commit this sentence. So if I commit this sentence here, you will see that PyCharm uh, thinks we have only added one sentence. So let's commit that and uh, a new text. I'm going to write the commit message. So we then we are going to commit it here. What's the problem with that? If I change this word here, See, all this text is blue, but that's bad to keep track of all the changes. We want to have more granular control on what we have changed. So it's going to be much easier later on to go back and check the changes that we have made. In order to do that, we just have to have every sentence into a new line. So let's do that. Here we can write, press enter. We can commit these changes, control K. We can use the same name, new text. Of course, in your case, please, please be very specific with the name of the commit, because the more specific you are, the easier it will be in a month or two months, just check the commit message and better understand what you've done. So let's commit this change. And now you will see that if in the future I'm going to just simply change this word here, see, only these sentences are changed. So it's going to be much easier for you to keep track. One last thing before we go to GitHub, I like, also to do this the following thing so here let me actually recompile the doc one other thing that i like to do is to create like sections so let's call this section and again if you want to find out more how to create sections uh, just check my video on that i'm going to call this section introduction 
Okay, so we have this introduction here. We can compile the file. One thing that I really like to do is to have another file, which is called introduction, and then import it. Why? Because when I'm collaborating with different people, it's going to be much easier if different parts of the paper are compartmentalized in different files. So it's going to be less likely that we're going to have emerging conflict when we arrange, rearrange text. And that's super simple. We just have to create a new file. We're going to call it introduction. It's a text file. We want to add it. Yes, we want to track it. We can delete all the content of this file. We can go back with Control Tab. We can just select all these introduction section. Let's say the ontology, for instance. Section. All these introduction, we're going to copy it here. So this is our introduction file. Of course, if I recompile the document right now with Shift F10, the method is there, but the introduction is gone because we have removed it from the file. But that's super simple to re-add it back. So here we have two options. We can use the include for input command. We're going to say input, and then we just have to specify the name of the file. Let's recompile the document. And you will see that it's much easier now if I want to make some changes all in the introduction because all that text is inside this file here. As you can see, the introduction is a new file that didn't exist before, so it's all green. It contains some file that was already there, and we can click here to see all the things that we have done. We have removed all this text, and we move it to the introduction, so everything is And we can see that there is this green. We can also see here on the side the changes that we have made. It's very small. I don't know if you can see very well. Let's commit this change, and let's move to GitHub because the video is getting already very long. So divided into sections. Great. So we can commit. So the last thing that we need to do is now to just move to GitHub. So we can go here. Of course, you need a GitHub account. So I can go to GitHub. And then I have already my account. So I can just go to GitHub and open here. You have to log in. I'm going to create a new repository here. So we're going to call it uh, example a dash YouTube dash latex dash git. You can choose any name you want as long as it's not colliding with any other repository. We can uh, just put in public. We don't want to add a readme. We don't want to add a git ignore because you already added and we don't want to add a license. We can just click on create repository. We can click here. Then we can just use this command here, git remote add origin. So this we have to copy it inside the terminal of PyCharm. PyCharm will take care of all the rest. So we can do control V, git remote add origin, and this. Of course, this you can do it inside any IDE. And then it has added the origin. Now the last thing that we need to do inside PyCharm is to push the changes. So we can click on this uh, green arrow here, or as you can see, it's Ctrl Shift K. So Ctrl Shift K. Here we can see all the commits uh, that sit in here on my computer, which have not been yet pushed to origin. So I can push the changes to origin, and then if I go back here to GitHub, you can see that if I refresh this page, all the files are going to be here. Let's see quickly. Two last very important things. How to get changes from a remote repository, so on GitHub, back on our computer, and how to fix conflicting things. So we go here on GitHub, and we're going to change the introduction section. We're not going to be happy. We're not happy at the moment because it's an introduction without a capital I. So we can go scroll back here. We just say uh, capitalized text. And again, please use better commit messages. So we can just come back here and we can say update project. Okay, so this is going to update our project. So it's going to check if online someone has made some changes. And this is a good practice. Every time you start working on a project that is stuck on GitHub, before you start working, just press on this arrow here or press Ctrl T. So we can say merge into current branch if you have some changes. And then we should be able to see that here, as you saw, it became one. We can see that there is one file updated in the commit. So let's go here to Git. We can see that Federico Tartarini with the star, so from GitHub, has changed our file 
and this commit was called capital text, capitalized text. And we can also see the changes that uh, I've made online. So if I click on the introduction here, we can see the change in the file. So now our change is here on our computer. And again, the file is white because it is a committed change. That's it, the last thing that I want to show you how to merge conflicting changes. And it can get a little bit more complex, but it's fundamentally quite simple. So it can happen that two people are changing the same file at the same time. So I online am changing the file or a friend of mine, another person collaborating with me, and they don't want to call it Lorem, but they want to call it Federico. And here I want also to change it to Ciao. So we've made two changes, okay? So let's first commit the changes here on GitHub. So this is done. So this is committed. Someone has made the changes and it has pushed it to GitHub. Of course, now in the introduction, it says Federico. Okay? But here, locally, we are not aware of that, but we are making a change. So let's also commit this change. So let's press Ctrl K and we're going to say uh, added for the... So let's commit these changes here. And then let's try to push these changes to the Git origin master. Because as you can see, locally here at this step here, but the last time I talk with GitHub, okay, I just check that they did this capitalized text. I'm unaware that something has something has happened online, and I'm not aware it at the moment. I'm not aware about it yet. So let's try to push our changes to the origin, and we're going to see that we're going to have a problem. We are going to push these changes. We should receive an error, push rejected. Push of the current branch master was rejected because we need to merge and we need to fix the conflicting issue. What is the conflicting issue is that we have added this word that was not okay. So I click on merge and PyCharm, I think here it shines because it's great. It's going to show us the merging conflicting and we can blindly see accept, accept yours or accept theirs. So let's have a look first. So we can click on this file here, double click. We can see that from the server, they say Federico. And your version, which is local, is Ciao. So here, we need to decide what to do. So we can say, yeah, I mean, I'm happier with the Ciao version, and I don't want the Federico. So I can click X here. All changes have been processed. So I can press, press Save Changes and Finish Map. So I can press Apply. And this is going to merge the remote. So we have fixed the issue, but we have not then push it here. So let's do that now. Let's try to do it again. Push. So we can see the added words and merge the problem. So we push. Now this origin master should bump up here to show us that we are in line with everything. And if I refresh this page here on GitHub, we can see that now it stays out. Even if you're not an expert user, now you also know how to track uh, changes with Git and how to merge conflicting issues that you may have. I think uh, if you're going to start using it right now, you will never regret it. As you can see, it's super simple. It allows you to track all the files, to see all the changes, uh, and it is fantastic. There are a lot of other things that I was not able to cover in this video. Let me know if you would like me to find out more. For instance, there is an embedded track changes uh, version control inside PyCharm that I was not able to, con to show you this time. Yeah, if you have any question or if you have if you'd like to find out more, please leave a comment. Don't forget to like the video if you find the, the content of this video interesting and to subscribe to my channel. If you know someone that may benefit from this video, also feel free to share the video with them. And thank you very much for listening and see you in the next video.